In Mortimer's Hedge Maze, there are seven statues, each with an inscription. In alphabetical order, they are Ariadne. I guide the sword that killed the Minotaur. Daedalus. I am the architect of my own demise. Icarus. I am the innocent one, sacrificed for the sins of the father. Minus. His gesture sealed his fate. The Minotaur. I am the cursed child. Pasiphae. Deliverance alone suffices not to wash away my humiliation. Theseus. Wrongly positioned, I am the blind hero. These are many of the major players in the story of King Minos and the Minotaur. Now, in the middle of the courtyard, there is a gazebo with its own inscription. It's up to the just to deliver judgment. Truth unlocks all possibilities as well as a pressure plate. Many of the statues have slots in them, so it's up to us to use Mother's sword to deliver judgment. Now, I know this isn't the definitive version of the myth. I intentionally left out a lot of irrelevant details and had to choose between conflicting versions. This is just my essential guide to Minus, and to tell this story we're going to have to start before he was born with Zeus and Europa. Zeus saw a beautiful woman named Europa and decided to seduce her. Heavy quotes around that word. So he decided to take the form of a white bull and he approached her and just kind of waited for her to ride him, which she does for some reason. And his instinct is to run into the ocean with her on his back, taking her far from her home and to a new island called Crate. He then reveals his human, godly form, makes her the queen of the island, creates a constellation in the sky for her, and gives her several mystical artifacts, artists impress her. Although maybe he's making up for the birthdays he missed, because he is also her great-great-grandpa. Europa goes on to have three children from Zeus, but the one that we're concerned with is the future King Minos. So, flash forward a few years, Minos is all grown up, and he is the King of Crete, and he's married to Pasiphae. He asked the gods to give him a sign that they approve of his role, that his role is just, and Zeus ignores him. He's done with the kid. Luckily, Poseidon says no sweat and sends him a white bull from the sea. You know, like, do you get it? This is like what your dad did. Do you get it? Anyway, instead of being a good Greek boy and sacrificing the bull, Minus decided to keep it, and he sacrificed an inferior animal instead. This, of course, annoyed Poseidon, so he retaliated by cursing Pasiphae to fall in love with the white bull. Again, do, do you get it? It's like your mom and your dad. Do you get it? Do you get it? So Pasiphae has sex with the bull, and their mating produces a half-bull, half-human hybrid named Asterion the second, but you probably know him better as the Minotaur. The Minotaur was a monster, like a true innate monster. He required human meat to live, and he would go on rampages to get it. To deal with his rowdy son, Minos decided to find the most brilliant architect in the world named Daedalus and ask him to construct something to contain the Minotaur. So Daedalus constructed a complex maze called the Labyrinth to contain the beast. Minus said, great, thanks. And then he locked Daedalus in a tower and threw away the key. They say they did this because he didn't want the secret of the maze to escape. But in some versions, Daedalus was the one who created a contraption that allowed Pasiphae to have sex with the bull. So. And this was probably still upset about that. Oh, he also threw Daedalus' kid Icarus in jail with him to keep him company. 
So time passed, and all was good. The man bull was out of sight, out of mind. Pasiphae and Minos had a bunch of other children, including a son named Androgeus and a daughter named Ariadne. Androgeus was murdered while visiting Athens. So Minos decided to do the rational thing and demand the city pay him back by helping him feed the Minotaur with seven boys and seven girls every couple of years forever. So Theseus saw this human sacrifice and said, oh, okay. Then he saw it happen again a few years later and Theseus was like, none of my business. But the third time it happened, there's was like, come on now. So Theseus decided to actually step in. Theseus went into the labyrinth to slay the Minotaur himself, not fully grasping the dangers of the maze. Ariadne saw him, decided he was cute, so she didn't want him to be eaten alive by her half-brother. So she came up with an idea. She gave him a ball of twine so they could trace his way in and trace his way out after he slew the Minotaur. Theseus does just that and elopes with Ariadne. Happily ever after. Oh, uh, what about Daedalus? Well, he was left in the tower, so he hatched a plan. He would fly out the window, away from Crete, start a new life. To do this, he made wings from feathers and wax for both him and his kid. Unfortunately, they were very fragile. If you flew too low, the sea would gobble you up. But if you flew too high, your wings would melt and you'd fall into the sea. Despite this, they flew out the window and actually had success at first. But eventually Icarus flew too close to the sun, his wings melted, and he fell to his death. Daedalus would later avenge his son by boiling Minos alive in his own bathtub. Minos' story doesn't end there, though. He goes on to become a judge of the dead in Hades. Okay, but what about this game, the council? Well, the point of the inscription on the kiosk is that Louis must use his sword to punish the villain, whoever that may be. And the inscription makes Mortimer's interpretation of the mythic characters very clear. Ariadne and Theseus are heroes, or at least in the role of the hero. Icarus and the Minotaur are tragic figures. They have been done dirty by their dads and the world around them. Daedalus and Pasiphae have descriptions about the negative results of their actions and their repentance. The only one who doesn't seem to feel guilt for their actions is Minos himself. This is actually a very forward-thinking take. Uh, Plato famously praised him as a wise leader, if only because he was related to Zeus. Virgil and Dante both describe him as the wise judge of the underworld. In fact, the first critical evaluation of him I could find was in Michelangelo's The Last Judgment, where he is given donkey ears to symbolize his foolishness. But personally, I don't even think he's stupid or foolish. He's just greedy and cruel. Our values as a society are constantly in flux, and therefore so is our evaluation of Minas, who is, by today's standard, not a good person. I think that's pretty interesting, and I made this video because I went through a mythology phase as a kid, and now you all have to suffer for it.